Hi and welcome back. Regular viewers to the channel will know that I have a slight coffee addiction, supported by those who very often buy me a coffee and I'm very thankful of that. Uh, I drink coffee because I do love the taste, but also there are numerous studies showing the potential health and longevity benefits of drinking coffee every day. That said, not all is rosy, according to this latest study, in the coffee garden. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this latest study into drinking coffee and potential health benefits has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Dennis Thompson, where he covers a recent study out of the University of California in San Francisco that looks into the negative effects of coffee consumption on heart health and on sleep. This new study reports that your daily cup or cups of coffee may be a quick pick-me-up, but this pick-me-up comes with a mixed bag of good and not so good effects on your health. The researchers say that drinking coffee helps people stay more active, but it also significantly robs some people of sleep. And while coffee doesn't seem to cause irregular rhythms in the upper chambers of the heart, it can cause the lower chambers to skip beats, according to findings presented at the online annual meeting of the American Heart Association. Lead author, Dr. Gregory Marcus, chief of cardiology at the University of California in San Francisco said, people should understand that this extremely commonly consumed beverage really does have substantive effects on our health and they're variable. It's not the coffee is necessarily all good or all bad. It's very likely that whether it's net good or net bad depends on a combination of factors. Dr. Sana Al Khatib, a heart rhythm expert with the Duke Clinic in North Carolina, who wasn't involved in the study, said a very common question we get almost every week from patients is, can I drink coffee, especially in patients with atrial fibrillation? She said on the subject that from previous studies, results were all over the place and it hasn't been easy for us clinicians to advise patients. For this clinical trial, Dr. Marcus and his team recruited 100 coffee drinkers and fitted them with several devices to continuously record their health. They were a Fitbit, a heart monitor and a blood glucose tracker. Over the two weeks, participants were randomly assigned on a daily basis to either drink as much coffee as they liked or to abstain completely. The researchers then tracked the changes for each person and between people that occurred when they were either exposed to coffee or they went without. Let's now take a look at the findings of the study. The study found no evidence that coffee consumption created any irregular rhythms within the atria, that's the upper chambers of the heart. That's good news, since one of the major medical concerns about coffee has been whether it might promote atrial fibrillation, a potentially dangerous condition. But they did find that coffee consumption could cause the ventricles, those are lower chambers of the heart, to skip beats. Dr. Marcus said, on days randomly assigned to coffee, people exhibited about 50% more premature ventricular contractions, PVCs, more early beats arising from the lower chambers of the heart. Those who consume more than a drink of coffee exhibited essentially a doubling of their PBC counts. My comment is, it's not clear from this statement what a drink of coffee is. Does it mean one cup or does it mean more than one cup? Dr. Gregory added, these PVCs are common and are usually regarded as harmless. We all have them once in a while and generally they're considered benign. But we and others have shown that more PVCs are an independent risk factor for heart failure over time. Not everyone with more PVCs has heart failure, but it is a factor. My comment here, not everyone with more PVCs has heart failure, but what is the number of those that do? Is it significantly relevant or just a factor? Coffee also has dramatic effects on two other major health factors, those being physical activity and sleep. Dr. Marcus said, on days they were randomly assigned to drink coffee, participants on average took about 1,000 more steps than they normally would. 
for every additional cup of coffee drink consumed, there was an additional 500 steps. My comment here, another 500 steps is a good thing. And if you look at the calories, there's only around two calories per cup of black coffee. So again, is that really a bad thing? On the other hand, coffee tended to rob people of sleep. Dr. Marcus said, on days randomly assigned to coffee, people slept on average about half an hour less that evening. For every additional cup of coffee, there was about 80 minutes less sleep. My comment is, this isn't really new information and can be easily countered by drinking decaf after 11 o'clock or maybe midday. If you are caffeine sensitive, then drink decaf all day. But people who were genetically inclined to metabolize coffee more quickly did not exhibit any significant relationship between their coffee consumption and sleep deprivation. Dr. Sana al Khatib said the study was well done, but she sees a need for a follow up research involving more patients over a longer time to see if coffee's immediate effects eventually lead to increased risk for heart disease, stroke, and other health problems. So let's take a look at the cohort. Participants in this study were relatively young and healthy with an average age of 38 and an average BMI on the high end of healthy. Dr. Sana commented that this is not typical of the patient population we see in clinical practice who are older and have one or more health problems. Dr. Marcus added, so if you're concerned about the effects of coffee on your health, you should probably talk with your doctor. Depending on your personal health issues, it might make sense for you to either drink coffee or to abstain from it. My comment here is this statement could be shortened to ask your doctor. And if you don't like the answer, then go and see a few more doctors and get a second and third opinion. Remember, not all MDs are created equal. Dr. Marcus closed by saying, for those that are concerned about atrial fibrillation, these data suggest there's no reason to worry about coffee consumption. On the other hand, if there are concerns about PVCs, it may make sense to avoid or minimize coffee consumption. If there's a goal to increase or maintain physical activity, then coffee may be helpful. But for those who have difficulty sleeping, then the sleep disruption caused by coffee may make it less worth it. Despite her reservations, Dr. Al Khatib plans to use this study when counseling patients. She said, I wouldn't think of these results as, oh, okay, great, so what? Let's wait for the next study. I will incorporate those findings into my discussions with patients, of course, after I've read the full paper and assuming there are no surprises. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative. I thought I'd come across a study that was going to show some severe downsides to drinking coffee and possibly a reason to revisit my coffee drinking habits. That said, there seem to be three main areas. First of all, an increase in step count, which in my humble opinion is not a bad thing. Uh, also a disruption to sleep, but the study didn't say if that disruption was to light sleep, deep sleep, or even REM sleep. It also didn't say what time the coffee drinkers stopped drinking the coffee. So if they're going to continue drinking coffee till six, seven or eight o'clock at night, obviously their sleep is going to be disrupted. All they need to do is make sure they stop drinking caffeine by about midday, which gives, gives them a good 12 hours, bearing in mind the half-life of caffeine. And there are so many good brews on the market now that are decaf. There's no excuse for drinking decaf in the afternoon. In the old days, they used to taste bad. Now they're as good as regular coffee. The other uh, comment on pre premature ventricular contractions was that they were common and usually regarded as harmless and not everyone that has PVCs has heart failure. So if you think that drinking coffee may affect you in this way, again, as the doctor said, you need to speak to your MD to see if there's an issue. So I think all in all, taking into account all of the results of the study, I will continue to drink my three to five cups of coffee a day, making sure that the ones after midday are decaf. Um, so I don't think it's really going to change the way that I drink coffee. Uh, let me know what kind of coffee habits you've got and let me know if you think this particular study is going to change the way that you drink coffee. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.
ใบสนับ